Good afternoon and welcome to a weekly media briefing and public health update with Montgomery County Executive Mark Elrich. I'm Lorna Virgilio, Hispanic Public Information Officer, and joining us today is Dr. Keisha Davis, who is the county's health officer, Dr. James Bridgers, Director of the Department of Health and Human Services, Mr. Sean O'Donnell, Deputy Chief of Public Health Services, and Dr. Earl Stoddard, Assistant Chief Administrative Officer. We have two special guests today, Ariel Gordon, 988 Hotline Director for Every Mind, and Monica Martin. She's Acting Chief of Behavioral Health and Crisis Services, also for the Department of Health and Human Services. Welcome everyone, thank you for joining us. Hello, good afternoon, Mr. County Executive, good to see you. Good to be here, and thank you everybody for joining us again today. Are there are many reasons to be hopeful about our local economy in the months ahead. But one of the big reasons is the anticipated lowering of interest rates later today by the Federal Reserve. As I mentioned before, Montgomery County has been significantly impacted by the Fed's decision to raise interest rates to levels we hadn't seen for nearly two decades. And by keeping these rates high, the Fed indirectly sapped the county's power to generate its normal revenue. Revenue from the county's transfer and recordation taxes is down about 50% from historical averages. So the money generated for the county when homes are sold and registered to a new party through the transfer tax and the recordation tax lagged because of the declining home sales. I'll put out, you know, just to make a further point on this, um, when the county revenues go down, we contract for fewer things, we buy fewer things, so when you buy less, when you have fewer people working on contracts for the things we need to be done, not only do you not get stuff done that you need to get done, but in terms of the local economy, those dollars aren't available to hire people. They're not, able, they're not available to pay for merchandise or supplies or equipment that you'd be buying from vendors in Montgomery County. So it has a trickle down negative effect by depressing actual consumption of things that government normally would consume. Um, higher interest rates have kept home sales far below the normal pace, meaning that many families have been waiting for interest rates to fall. It's not going to happen all at once, um, but I hope pent-up demand for homes will help drive home sales in our area back up and help positively impact the county and state revenues. Um, the interest rates, I think, have been kept artificially high for too long, and I hope the Fed provides some relief starting today. Um, September is Suicide Prevention Month, and suicide rates in our county reached record levels as recently as 2022, according to the Centers for Disease Control. In 2022, the nation and Montgomery County got a new tool to help people who are having suicidal thoughts, and it's the 988 um, Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. And it's, it's available 24-7 to call, text, and chat. Two summers ago, the suicide prevention hotline replaced the 1-800 number that had been used previously. The new option gives users the option to call, chat, or text with someone, and is a simple three-digit number. Between the first year and the second year, there was a tenfold increase national, nationally in people who were reaching out for help. 988 is promoted and um, been shared by our health department and human services professionals. It's run locally by one of our community partners, EveryMind. Leaders tell us that over the last year, they fielded nearly 3,000 texts from local phone numbers in Montgomery County and participated in more than 1,300 chats. There's a strong number that represent real people who need help, um, but more people need to know that this free lifeline is available. With so many people struggling with depression, anxiety, and addiction, more people need to know that 988 is there to help them. I want to thank Congressman Jamie Raskin for the suicide prevention legislation he introduced recently. The Stabilization to Prevent Suicide, the STOP Act, would create a grant program at the Federal Sub Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration to help expand the use of evidence-based models for stabilizing individuals with serious thoughts of suicide. His personal experience and gave him a unique perspective on suicide, and this legislation has been in the making for several years. At the state level, the Thomas Bloom Raskin Act, enacted in July 2001, helped expand the state's crisis call center so that trained mental health counselors can periodically check in with people who need mental health support instead of waiting for them to call when they're in crisis. I'm sorry that the 
congressman had to experience the loss of his son through suicide. Um, and I know that, you know, the work he's done is a tribute to his son and coming from someone who's had to experience this, um, our sympathies have always gone out to him. I would like to highlight some of the work done by our county to keep more people safe from self-inflicted shootings. As of September 1st, gun stores must provide information on suicide prevention, gun safety, and conflict resolution when a customer purchases a firearm. If a gun store is not displaying that information, please contact the county's health department and human services. Um, inspectors will look into these complaints and check on compliance with the new Suicide Awareness Firearm Safe Act, Firearm Education or Safe Act. Um, also, the county is raising awareness and supporting funding to address mental health issues. An event will be held this upcoming Thursday featuring a continuous walking circle to represent the constant need for attention and support for mental health and suicide awareness. To help us reduce the stigma and start conversations on these important topics, we have you know nonprofits that are ready to help, and that mental health awareness walk will be going on at the executive office building in Rockville from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. I'd like to invite now Ariel Gordon, the director of Every Minds 988 Hotline, to join me now, as well as Monica Martin from our Department of Health and Human Services. They're here to talk about their efforts and how we're trying to get more help to more people suffering with depression and mental health challenges. So welcome, Monica and Ariel. Thank you, Mr. County Executive. Happy to be here. Yes, likewise. Thank you, Mr. Executive, County Executive. Ariel, do you have some opening remarks? Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to share. And I want to really reiterate and reflect some of what the county executive shared already, which is that the 988 service that launched two years ago was really building on the infrastructure that had been in place previously through the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. The 988 service, so what's most important to remember about it is it's really designed to be a no barrier access for, for anyone in the community to get support for mental health and increasingly for behavioral health needs. Uh, the 988 team that we have um, has really expanded over the past two years in recognition of the fact that with the service being available nationally and the number being so easily accessible and easier to remember, the volume of folks reaching out has really increased. And uh, one thing that has become really evident over the past couple of years is that the access via chat and text is increasingly important. Um, that is really where we've seen folks reaching out um, almost uh, exponentially increasing over the past couple of years, particularly on text where about half of the folks um, seeking support are young people under 24. So we really are seeing that this is a needed service um, and what our counselors do when someone reaches out is really provide a listening ear. We hear from folks on every in every place of the spectrum in terms of their mental health needs. We certainly hear from folks in reaching out in crisis. Um, we also also hear from folks having a tough day, uh, experiencing bullying in school. Some folks do reach out during their school day for support because they can do so discreetly via text. Um, so we really we see the need for this service being so important and that um, opportunity to have a confidential and anonymous um, person to hear you, to help collaboratively develop a plan to stay safe if that's needed um, is, is really important. And we, we do find that 98% of the folks that we talked to were able to deescalate over the course of our conversations. But we also have folks who reach out regularly. Um, we know that when we're able to support someone in the moment when they first reach out, it doesn't mean that they won't need support again. So um, really the importance of this service is it's <clears throat> Ability and that it's available for folks of all ages, of every background, um, and, and that our team is really recognizing the need to grow and be available and able to answer those calls, texts, and chats in the moment when someone reaches out. 
Thank you very much, um, Ariel Gordon. Uh, Monica, do you have some opening remarks? Anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, we're just so grateful to have EveryMind as a partner doing this work and, and growing it and making it better every single day. So thank you so much, Ariel, for joining. Um, just to make folks aware about other suicide prevention work happening uh, across the Department of HHS and, and with community partners, we do have a suicide prevention coalition that has almost 100 members on it at this point in time that we invite any community member or organization to join. It is facilitated by our local behavioral health authority and co-led by another partner, uh, Shepard Pratt. It meets the fourth Tuesday of every month from 3.30 to 5 p.m. It um, includes a very organized facilitation of speakers and advocates to provide updates and information on suicide prevention data, services, and initiatives. Every month has been a key part of that support and update work. Uh, and Shepard Pratt did receive a, a grant from Congressman Damien Raskin, who's been active in so many ways um, in suicide prevention work, to increase um, those uh, training efforts specifically here in Montgomery County. So our local behavioral health authority partnered with Shepard Pratt, who, who planned on how to best utilize those funds. And they've been utilized to provide over 20 free clinical trainings for Montgomery County clinicians to earn free ed continuing education credits on suicide prevention. Uh, and in addition, Shepard Pratt is offering free trainings to community members and organizations, which focuses on responding to suicidality, such as mental health first aid, which every mind also has a very long history of providing in our community, and also uh, question, persuade, and refer, which is a much shorter, briefer training to support folks and supporting those that are struggling with um, suicidal ideation. Uh, the courses have been well attended to providing necessary information and training to community members and if anyone is interested in joining that coalition, they can reach out to mcspc at montgomerycountymd.gov. Um, and I also want to make sure our community is aware of the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention Out of the Walk, Darkness Walk. This is something that takes place annually in cities nationwide. And it's for those that are affected by suicide and those who support them to raise awareness and much needed funds to promote the message that suicide can be prevented and no one is alone. The Montgomery County, Maryland walk is happening this Sunday, uh, the 22nd at the Germantown Soccer Plex. And on-site registration starts at nine, the program starts at 10. Um, and um, there's, there's a goal to raise $75,000 to uh, have the foundation be able to support their efforts to fund research for suicide prevention, to create distributed education programs, advocate for public policy and support survivors of suicide loss. Thank you very much uh, to both of you, members of the media. If you have any questions regarding suicide prevention or the hotline, not 8988, uh, please raise your hands so that we can see you and uh, call on you so that you ask your question. If you have any questions for Ms. Martin and or Ms. Gordon. Any questions regarding suicide prevention? No questions? Well, thank you to the two of you for joining us this afternoon. Uh, you can remain on the call if you like. If you need to drop off, go ahead. Um, and again, thank you for, for being here, Mr. County Executive. Thank you. Um, and thank you guys for being on today. This is really important, and I hope uh, the media at least covers it and puts the messages out there that we need to get out there because, you know, part of doing these briefings is giving the press to take useful information to make sure their readers or listeners uh, get to understand some of the things we're doing. And I can't think of, you know, more important things than dealing with suicide prevention. There are many important things, but suicide prevention is, you know, pretty near the top of the list of things we need to help with. I want to remind everyone that Montgomery County's 2024 online residence survey is now open to all residents 18 and up. I strongly encourage taking the survey and helping us understand how to make the county better. Surveys accessible on the county website will be available until 1159 on Monday, September 30th. The survey provides the ability for direct feedback on local government services and allows the public to rate the county in several categories to help us gauge how the quality of life 
is here in terms of how our residents perceive it. Listening to our residents, key to delivering the services they need and expect. And the survey gives us um, information from across the county. Everybody has equal access and opportunity to share feedback. Your feedback will help us make informed decisions that benefit our entire community. And the question topics include county services, usage of amenities and facilities, participation in county programs, customer service experiences, and effectiveness of our communications. We have also included questions about household practices like recycling to get a complete picture of how we're serving you. The survey is crucial for improving customer service in the county and promoting transparency and informing our budget and policy decisions. And the insights we gather help deliver effect, effective and more efficient government services. So I encourage people to please um, hit the county homepage and participate in the survey. Uh, we're also doing this, um, our budget forms right now, which is kind of our annual effort to get in, input from our citizens we, citizens. we do the budget forms before people actually start working on the budget so that things that come up in the forums can hopefully be incorporated into what we do in the upcoming budget. It also gives us an opportunity to explain to residents how the county sits financially and what our prospects are. So please take advantage of the budget forums as well, which are available both uh, live and in person, like the one I'm going to tonight, but they're also Zoom available to the audience. So next thing, health report. So this is the last thing I'll we'll talk about today. Um, I wanna to provide a brief update on the current status of COVID-19 in our county. COVID actually has been up in the last several weeks, but we're starting to see those case numbers flatten out. We're experiencing more days of cooler weather. We'll be entering a period when other respiratory illnesses like influenza and RSV start to circulate. I'm asking the media to continue covering these issues and to remind your audience about the importance of vaccinations. Staying up to date on COVID-19 vaccines, as well as flu and RSV shots is one of the best ways to protect ourselves and our community. Um, give you the same message we always give you. Getting the COVID vaccine may not prevent you from getting COVID, but the outcomes from people who are vac um, vaccinated, the health outcomes for people who are vaccinated are far better than for those people who are not vaccinated and get COVID. So while not a pure preventative measure, it is a measure that will certainly keep you healthier and put you at less at risk of more severe consequences from getting COVID. Um, Sean can go into more detail on this, but I'm glad to hear that our state and federal partners are providing these new updated COVID vaccines to local health departments to give those out to people who are uninsured. So let's all stay vigilant, take precautions, keep health and safety at the forefront. We need to look out for another um, wave, um, especially um, for those who are most vulnerable. As I think you probably noticed by now, COVID goes through waves. We had a summer wave. Um, the next wave will likely come as it gets colder and people spend more time indoors with each other. Um, that's become the norm. So as, you know, the hope is as long as COVID stays in this less lethal state and our population stays as heavily vaccinated as it is, that we'll see you know, less of the negative effects. Um, before I turn this over to my public health team, I also want to acknowledge and thank our public health team, along with DGS procurement departments and especially our recreation department and the public, public library employees. In January 22, we began to give out free COVID test kits. In fact, we gave out 93,000 test kits on the first day and 278,000 test kits in the first week. At the end of July, our supply and our funds for these free tests finally ran out. But over those two and a half years, this county gave out 2.7 million COVID tests in our libraries, as well as an additional 3 million face masks. All totaled throughout the multiple distribution outlets, this county distributed more than 3 million free COVID tests. I consider this more than just a successful operation that saved lives here. I appreciate the coordination and hard work displayed by so many actions that our government employees took to provide these kits and face masks at no car charge to our customers. So I'm gonna turn it over to our HHS team as well as Dr. Stoddard for any updates from them, and then we'll get any questions you may have. Thank you, Mr. County Executive. I just wanna add that uh, we're, we're waiting for the supply of COVID vaccine from our state partners for the uninsured populations. Once we have that, we'll 
we'll share information about how to contact yeah. us uh, to, to get a shot if you need one. Uh, but again, just urging people to take uh, precautions. If, if they, you have not gotten COVID this summer, uh, you could still get this strain of COVID that's going around. So um, again, thank you for those uh, those words of caution to the community. Thank you, Mr. Donald. Dr. Bridgers? Nothing for me this afternoon, Lorna. Thank you. Ready for a question and answer. Dr. Davis? Nothing additional. Just a reminder, it is uh, vaccine season, so get those COVID and flu vaccines, and if you're um, of the right age group, consider your RSV vaccine as well. Dr. Stoddard? That's good questions. All righty, let's, uh, let's get started with the questions. Members of the media, if you have any questions uh, regarding any topics in the county, please raise your hand. Any questions from the members of the media? For county officials and the county executive? No questions? Going once. Going twice. I guess we're done for today. Thank you everybody for joining us this afternoon. Stay safe. We'll see you again next time. Have a great one. Thank you.